Well, he hasn't even taken office yet, and we're already seeing some of Donald Trump's campaign promises come to life. The Trans-Pacific Partnership is dead, my friends. That is right. Now, this is according to the Senate's soon-to-be top Democrat, Chuck Schumer. He told labor leaders on Thursday that the TPP, which is, of course, that trade deal at the center of President Obama's pivot uh, to Asia, will not be ratified by Congress. This is Obama's signature global trade deal. It's been on life support for months. Both Democrats and Republicans have been campaigning against these unfair trade policies ahead of the election. And um, Schumer was making these statements based on some um, Republican congressional leaders had talked to him privately. So he was like, there's no way. It's not going to happen. Donald Trump, of course, in June said there's no way to fix the TPP. We need bilateral trade deals. We do not need to enter into another massive international agreement that ties us up and binds us down. Now, of course, uh, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said Trump is probably going to be able to negotiate a better deal if that's what he wants to do. So going forward, you know, Donald Trump kind of campaigned on that, that he's really good at doing deals. And of course, uh, President Obama and his team had really been trying to ram the TPP through before the end of the year. That's not going to happen with both Republicans um, Republicans controlling both the House and the Senate and Donald Trump in. So they just don't have the votes. There you go. Another victory. And that's a pretty huge victory. Now, Donald Trump has already considered a lot of people for senior White House jobs. Um, you know, we're all kind of wondering what's going to happen. Is he going to get uh, the wrong people kind of getting his ear? Of course, once you're there in D.C., you're going to be around all sorts of smarmy fellows. Uh, but this is a list that was provided an anonymously. Um, that people are not allowed to be speaking to the press at this moment. This is a working document, uh, but there's a, a list provided by a member of the transition team. It includes names like uh, Trump campaign chairman Stephen K. Bannon, uh, Ryan Priebus, uh, campaign manager Kellyanne Conway, and then, of course, former Trump campaign manager Corey Lewandowski and retired Army Lieutenant General Flynn. So these are just some names that are being thrown around, but Ron Paul says Trump. Please, my message to you, resist the neocons, resist the shadow government elites. Um, this is a former congressman and libertarian icon, Ron Paul. You, he, he really needs no introduction here. Um, but he says that neocons and shadow government figures are going to attempt to infiltrate and influence Donald Trump's presidency and prevent him from achieving successful change. Take a listen. When we look at the president, we look at what he said, we look at what he might do, we look at his advisors, but quite frankly, there's an outside source which we refer to as a deep state right. or a shadow government. There's a lot of influence by people that are actually more powerful uh, than our, uh, our government itself, our president and all that. But I fear the fact that there's so much that can be done secretly out of control of our apparent government and out of the view of so many citizens. And of course, Ron Paul also warned about the dark actors. Now, we know we've been seeing a war in the Middle East really been ramping up. And that's why we were so afraid of Hillary Clinton getting in. Can't wait to start World War Three. Uh, but this is what the former congressman was warning about, that wars and military interventions can sometimes be forced upon a sitting president by these dark actors. Uh, Paul also noted that sometimes false flags and unintended consequences are beyond the control of even a sincere president that would prefer that those kind of things don't happen. So we know that there are dark actors in government. We know that there are rogue uh, people that are going to be trying to get the ear of the president. And that's why Ron Paul is issuing this warning. Steer clear of the neocons. We saw there in the WikiLeaks email that it was indeed a shadow government that was overseeing Hillary Clinton's investigation. So we know that there are these dark actors that think that they are above the law, beyond the law and uh, beyond the control of Congress. And I do feel that we are moving into a time when that's not going to be the case anymore. Um, you know, Donald Trump <laughs> might tweet all about it. Keep us live and updated at 3 a.m. in the morning when he takes to Twitter. Now, we also have been watching a lot of people going crazy all across the country ever since Trump got in, because, of course, these are loving uh, liberals who, you know, really wanted that peaceful transition. But it's not just white racists who voted for actual change in this country. Now we have a Muslim Democrat woman. Uh, this is Azra Nomani, and she says that she voted for Trump, and you will not believe how she silenced the CNN host 
with her explanation for why she did it. What I know that we have today is a very real and serious um, threat by extremist Muslims. And this is a reality that we haven't confronted directly for the sake of political correctness. And if people would hear about the concerns and fears that others have about the issues of refugees and extremists, then I think we could find a path that's in the middle. But unfortunately, what happens is that this liberal honor brigade shuts down all conversation. One Iranian military official had the audacity to call President-elect Donald J. Trump a joke. You know what we think is a joke around here, sir? The way you treat women, the way you hang gays from cranes, and the way you throw Christians in jail for, quote, apostasy. That's what we think is a joke around here. Now, this commander general took to their state-owned TV. I mean, what else is there in Iran? This is what he had to say regarding Donald J. Trump. He calls him a joke, and regarding the U.S. Navy vessels in the Persian Gulf, he says, uh, the person who has recently achieved power has, take, has talked off the top of his head. Threatening Iran in the Persian Gulf is just a joke. Now, Trump insisted during the campaign that he was going to take aggressive action against Iranian naval vessels that harass U.S. ships in the region, and let's just hope he takes a strong stand and does that. Regarding the uh, president's uh, legacy, the Iranian nuclear deal, where he lifted sanctions, gave them a pile of money, much like a drug deal, and let them run amok while they continue to build warheads and missiles. Let's just hope he deals with that, too. That's what we think is a joke. The fact that our last president gave you so much liberty to then chant death to America in your streets. So Donald J. Trump is coming out saying, you know what, we're going to take a different stance with you, and you have the nerve to call him a joke. Of course you do. Check out this article. It's up on our website, Infowars.com. While you're at it, be sure to download our app, Infowars.com forward slash app. I'm Margaret Hall reporting for Infowars.com. Well, great news, everyone. Donald Trump has regained access to his Twitter account. Now, we know that his uh, people there working on his campaign took him off Twitter in the weeks leading up to the election, but he's back back in effect, and he's already criticizing the professional protesters because indeed a lot of these people are being paid to do this, and he's also uh, criticizing the media for inciting some of them. He tweeted out on the 10th of November, just had a very open and successful presidential election. Now professional protesters incited by the media are protesting. Very unfair. But I love this because he, he came out a little bit more positively with a follow-up tweet saying, Love the fact that the small groups of protesters last night have passion for our great country. We will all come together and be proud. So I really like that because you know what? This is, this is, they are exercising their freedom of speech so long as they're not rioting and burning things down and beating people up and breaking windows. That's when, you know, you step over the line. But if you're just peacefully assembling, then yeah, that's great. You do love this country. You do care. And there are a lot of people who are genuinely concerned that their families and they themselves are going to be deported. So there is a lot of genuine concern out there, a lot of genuine fear. And that's why it's time for all of us to not just make fun of these people and, and you know, kick them when they're down, but educate them and open up some dialogue with them so that we can e explain the facts to them. They've been lied to for the last year and a half by a media that was dead set on getting Hillary Clinton in to complete the establishment agenda. They would stop at nothing. So they painted Donald Trump as this monster for a year and a half, issuing all of this fear propaganda. And so that's what's going on. These people are messed up in the head. These are, of course, the people that aren't getting paid $15 an hour by MoveOn.org. Um, so, of course, now Donald Trump is facing assassination calls already. Paul Joseph Watson tweeted out there was actually a, a reporter for The Guardian who said, you know, I think it's about time for another presidential assassination. Uh, but we have other people blatantly calling for him to be taken out. So this is just absolutely insane. But like I said, this is uh, this is coming from genuinely from a, a place of fear for some people. This is one point four million illegals who followed President Obama's request to sign up for these two controversial amnesty programs. And they're afraid that they gave up their this information. Um, so they, uh, they handed over their identities, their home addresses, and they admitted to being in the United States illegally in exchange for getting into these two programs, DACA and uh, DAPA. So they said, you know what, Obama's gonna grant us amnesty, we're gonna be honest with you, we're gonna give you our information, and now they're, they're saying, wow, well, we, we've just put ourselves on the hit list, so we're going to be the first ones to get taken out. Um, and then so John Miano of the Center for Immigration Studies 
says the programs are dead under a Trump administration. Those who signed up created a list of prime candidates for deportation. I disagree. Frankly, I think that this is going to provide a list of people who probably don't deserve to be deported at all. These are probably great people whose families have been here for a while and they've been contributing to our society. They're not criminals and they do deserve to be looked at to give, an, uh, to give this path to citizenship. It is the people, and Donald Trump has tried to say this again and again and again, it's the people who have these multiple deportations who keep coming back in, who are the criminals, who are the gang members, who are the people who get DUIs or rape little girls or have even committed murder in this country. Those are the people that we need to get the hell out, the bad hombres. Those are the people that are going to be the first on the list. So enough with this fear propaganda. People need to wrap their heads around that. And that's what I'm saying, that we have to have dialogue with these people, talk some sense into them, tell them to turn off their freaking TV sets because you have people like CNN staging um, protesters who come up and say, Hillary should have won, go to the Supreme Court and demand that we impeach Donald Trump. And then it, you, it turns out Don Lemon's like, hey, I know that guy. We went, uh, that's my cameraman. We went on a trip together. So they're actually like staging protesters to incite misinformation and confusion among the protesters. So that's why it's up to all of us to welcome them in and to unite under this new, new world order. This was a white lash. This was a white lash against a changing country. It was a white lash against a black president in part. And that's the part where the pain comes. While the enraged minions feeding from the trough of the New World Order disrupt the restoration of the American Republic, Donald Trump accepts his rightful position as the 45th president-elect of the United States of America. We had never met each other. Uh, I have great respect. Uh, the meeting lasted for almost an hour and a half. And it could have, as far as I'm concerned, it could, could have gone on for a lot longer. We really, um, we discussed a lot of different situations, some wonderful and some difficulties. Um, I very much look forward to dealing with the president in the future. Meanwhile, Hillary waits. This is painful, and it will be for a long time. But I want you to remember this. Our campaign was never about one person or even one election. It was about the country we love and about building an America that's hopeful, inclusive, and big-hearted. We have seen that our nation is more deeply divided than we thought. Hillary and company sit in limbo, impossibly attempting to rally faithless electors to throw the electoral college's vote as the pressure of all of her crime bubbles to the surface of a bog of corruption. Mr. President, will you pledge not to issue a pardon to Hillary Clinton and her co-conspirators for their many crimes against our country? and against society itself. Will you make that pledge? President-elect Donald Trump mentioned numerous times that he would assign a special prosecutor to wade into to handle Hillary's five FBI investigations, one of which, the email investigation, was dropped by Clinton Foundation lackey FBI Director James Comey, strategically setting the stage to allow President Obama to pardon Hillary, which begs the question, can a sitting president pardon someone under an investigation that has yet to be convicted of a crime? Well, unfortunately, the answer is yes. A full, free, and absolute pardon on Gerald Richard Ford Nixon. did it for Nixon, and Bill Clinton pardoned CIA Director John Deutsch for mishandling classified information. Attorney Samuel T. Morrison, a pardon specialist, told the Charlotte Observer, the Constitution says the president can pardon offenses against the U.S., not convictions. The only constraint is that he can't pardon someone in advance of committing the offense. Of course, the allegations against the Clinton crime family aren't singular in nature. 
They include the brazen mishandling of classified materials endangering national security, racketeering on levels the RICO Act was designed to address to the fullest extent of the law, the recent unexplained murders of witnesses, child rape allegations related to Bill and Hillary's numerous visits to Jeffrey Epstein's pedophile island, and election fraud. And just how many politicians and sycophants will be released from prosecution if the Clinton Foundation is allowed to walk free. Now, as Chelsea Clinton prepares to launch her political career, which will begin with Chelsea's hands dirty with money laundering allegations, the Clinton's hubris appears to be a stain impossible to wash off. Chelsea, seemingly unaware that Americans fully intend on restoring the Republic, beginning with the prosecution of her family. If Chelsea had a lick of sense, she would beg Cher for a seat on that rocket intended to leave planet Earth and America's seed of exponential providence behind. John Bound for InfoWars.com. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, November 11th, 2016, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight. Ding dong, the witch is dead. And so is the TPP. Democrats prepare for a Trump administration and the death of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Then, Ron Paul has a message for President-elect Trump. Resist the neocons. Well, what I'm concerned about and where I'll get some b better information will be when we find out who he appoints to the cabinet and who he's talking to. And already we have some hints. Unfortunately, there's been several neocons conservatives that are getting closer to Trump, and if he gets the advice from him, uh, then I don't think that's a good sign. Meanwhile, our new commander-in-chief has been busy on Twitter, and he's lashing out against media-incited protests that are erupting all across the country. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Have I not dealt with this enough? Have I not dealt with these dumbasses enough? Do I have to go to a college campus again tomorrow and make another viral video exposing how stupid and ignorant and illiterate these people are? Yes. And watching that video, I think I think Darren is 100% right. By the way, we will be showing that video pretty soon because uh, uh, Joe Biggs, it. oh, it was amazing. It was amazing. But we expected this. We expected this would happen. There are protests that are breaking out all across the country right now. And I say, you know, Donald Trump, he talks about draining the swamp in Washington. We could start with some of these protesters as far as I'm concerned. What do you do with these people? I mean, what am I supposed to do? These are the... Literal brainwashed masses. Yep. And not I mean, one, not one single American flag in the entire right. crowd. There was Mexican flags. A lot flags, of people hiding their face. flags, and they're hiding their face. Josh Owens got kicked in the back. But we're the other. violent people. Are you with InfoWars? I'm just running camera. Are you with InfoWars? I work for InfoWars, yeah. You work for InfoWars? You work for Alex Jones. Alex Jones, the fascist? But how? How? I don't talk to fascists. I'm not a fascist. Why, why can't we have an open dialogue? I don't talk to fascists. Why not? I don't talk to fascists. I'll talk to you, whatever you are. I don't talk to fascists. <laughs> all right. I'm a fascist, apparently. This guy doesn't know me at all. Oh, my God. I didn't see you. Look at this guy. This guy just assaulted me. Look at this guy. Pussy grabs back. Hey, this guy, Joe Biggs. This guy over here just assaulted me. Look at the people. The, the one, no, no, not you, not you. Over here. Look, right here, with his face covered, because he's a coward. How are you hitting people? He's a coward. You're 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 a coward. Look at that. They hate that so peaceful. They're 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 so peaceful, man. That's the reality of it is I'm not a violent person. Darren's not a violent person. Donald Trump isn't a violent person. Not usually. <laughs> but I don't know what, I mean, we, you know how I deal with these people. I go out there and I confront them with questions and logic and I engage in discourse. And what happens? They end up breaking down, having a mental breakdown and end up screaming and yelling at me. Always like, the same response. Exactly. You're a fascist. You're a racist. You're homophobic. He's a racist. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah.
It's true. How is he racist? How? Yeah. F***ing Trump. So this is what actually is going on, though. You know, the, I, what, I, the brainwashing is obvious with these people, but, here, but here's the actual analogy. This is like a five-year-old child that is in the checkout line of a grocery store, sees the candy bar that he wants, and mom says, no, you can't have that candy bar. And then what does the child do? Starts throwing a fit, starts crying, screaming, making a scene. That's what these people are. They're little babies. They are little children in, in arrested development who haven't matured enough, throwing a temper tantrum, throwing a fit because they didn't get what they want. And then on top of that, they're being groomed, they're being stroked into thinking they're right, they're on the right side of history by the mainstream media, by President Obama, justifying, or at least they think, justifying their temper tantrum, justifying their protest, which, regardless of the fact that you have every right to protest, that's perfectly fine. The issue we have is your ignorance mm -hmm. and your, your complete brainwash status. That's the issue that we have. But here's the funny thing to me. You know, all the stories right now, we were wondering last night, I was wondering last night when I was on air, what is the response? What are we going to have to deal with now? And we all kind of expected the protest, but, but on top of it, one thing that I didn't expect, and I guess I should have, was they're really going to push this racism deal, folks. This is the, this is the narrative they're going to run with. We're all racist. Everything's racist. They're going to try to foam in a racist, uh, some sort of race war here in the next two months. But here's the thing. <clears throat> Claiming, and this is the claim, that Donald Trump was elected U.S. president because of white race, white people who are racist is actually the most racist thing you can do. Because think about it like this, to sit here and to say Donald Trump was elected by white racist is completely discounting the Latinos that voted for Trump, completely discounting the black people that voted for Trump, and completely discounting all the people around the world. All countries around the globe who supported Trump and the Americans' election of Trump. So you're the racist, okay? You're the one spitting on all the people from whatever ethnic background who voted for Trump that aren't white. So you are the actual racist ignoring the people that voted for Trump that aren't white. So you are the racist. I think it's funny because it said they walked out of their uh, their classes or whatever. Even high that, school. Well, no, but, that, but that's probably the best thing in the world for them because that's where they're getting all this brainwashing out in the that's, first place. The they might thing, actually man. grow a pair and actually learn how to be a man or an actual human being that gets out there and, you know, actually has a conversation and instead of being surrounded in their little safe space the whole however, time. However, however, what's sad about that, these high school students were walking out as, as well as college students, but guess who went with them? The teachers, oh, the of faculty. Of They're course. there holding signs too. Say, That's Trump an embarrassment. Trump equals hatred. Trump equals hatred. Uh, did you see a little bit of hatred today out there? <laughs> I, did I? Josh Owens is one of the nicest people in the world. Yep. And he's sitting there and he's talking to this guy. He's like, hey, why won't you open up a dialogue with me? Why won't you speak with me? <laughs> And this guy, he looks back at me and he goes, Joe, this guy won't talk to me. When he says, Joe, this guy won't talk to me, he turns his back. The guy kicks Josh right in the back. <laughs> and Josh grabs me and goes, that guy just assaulted me. And I go, dude, that's what they do. And, but and why do they do that? Into the crowd. Here's a video because right Because they're cowards. Because they, have, they, they really think that they're justified because you're a racist. This is how the brainwashing works, folks. They really think that it's justifiable to kick Josh Owens in the back because he's such a racist. No, all the media, all the media came up to me. They're like, "Oh my God, why are you wearing a Trump shirt here? You know this is an anti-Trump rally." <laughs> and I said, "Yeah, I know." Because we're not cowards. But these yeah, guys are such wusses, though. I mean, they, they're the type of people that'll punch you when you're not looking, oh, kick yeah, Josh in the back, and they're just these little wimpy guys with oh, all yeah, wearing, that, that covering up their faces and everything. I, I, I mean, these guys, if I smacked one of these dudes, they'd be a splat on the wall. Let's go ahead and bring John Bound on to talk about what he witnessed. Now, John, Joe Biggs was assaulted dealing with these people today. Were you so also Josh Owens? Were you and Josh Owens as well? Were you also assaulted, John? I was assaulted by lunacy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your ears. <laughs> I had actually in the beginning uh, when I first walked up to the event uh, where it all began. Uh, I, I, you know, that first interview that I had with a kid in the mohair suit there, uh, I obviously, the people around me, you know, it sparked their interest. What I was saying back about Robert Byrd and, you know, and all the crimes that Hillary is actually responsible for and, and no one will take responsibility for. And, uh, so I was done talking to him and I started to go towards the front 
And I got a tap on my shoulder and I turn around and there's this older um, black woman and she just politely says, who are you with? And I said, I'm a journalist. And she said, yeah, but who are you with? And then I turned my camera on and I pointed it towards her and I said, who are you with? You know, and um, she's with her. She's with her, but she started to say she was like some vice president of the university, but then Ooh. she started to run oh, away. Oh, when you put and, the camera uh, I owe, on her. I owe it all to Brain Force, by the way, because I went down there with no coffee, and I had one of these last Brain Force, and I popped that Brain Force, and man, that whole, Makes a difference, that, whole, uh, that whole thing took like an hour and a half to happen, and it was, it was pretty intense. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. <laughs> Smells like victory. And a sweet victory it was, and it's funny because all the people that voted for Trump, all the true Americans, the patriots, we're all popping bottles, we're all celebrating happy, mm. uh, hand slaps and high fives, and then the brainwashed liberal nitwits crying, throwing fits, protesting in the streets. We can see the dynamic difference. So we're going to go out tomorrow. I'm going to start handing these people some diapers, maybe some bottles. I'm done with them. Donald Trump is the president. Inauguration January 20th. The fight begins now, folks. We got a president that has our back. We the people. America is back. The world looks at America. The bastion of freedom. The leadership of justice. Ah! Infowarstore.com. Support the broadcast, folks. We'll be back tomorrow. Alex Jones Show, 11 a.m. We've been told by MSM that we should just relax now and be happy and enjoy our big victory uh, because, wow, the system's been repudiated. Donald J. Trump elected 45th president of the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been an amazing victory, but it's only a beachhead in retaking this country. To make America great again, we must retake the nation. We have criminal enterprises, multinational corporations, crony insider combines in this rigged system. So Donald Trump has gotten control of the swamp, but he's got to put the equipment in the swamp now, and he has to blow the dam and drain the swamp out into the ocean of history. It is time to drain the swamp in Washington, D.C. And to do that, he has to remove Paul Ryan, and he's got the clout to go in and have the Republicans enforce the vote and do it. Paul Ryan stabbed him in the back over and over again. Paul Ryan wouldn't give him the money that Trump raised under law. Paul Ryan told everybody he's going to lose the House. He's going to lose the Senate. They picked up seats more than they thought. They told you he could never get the nomination. They told you Fox News and the Republican sickening establishment. We've removed Hillary. Now it's the Republicans and the Democrats in Congress. They told us that he could never have the nomination, even if he had three times as many delegates. It was the party that decided why they were the enlightened, anointed. George Will called it sovereigns of the party, the royalty, like the hereditary dictators in England uh, from Transylvania, I'm German, or Kim Jong-un of uh, North Korea, a third generation hereditary dictator. But don't tell that to all the dumbass young college kids brainwashed at state schools that communism isn't some type of wonderful heaven. Now, that said, if we want to make America great again, we've got to make it free again. And to do that, we've got to get the agenda of cutting taxes for people under $40,000 a year to basically zero. Trump's doing that. Wonderful. Cutting the corporate tax so it brings the money back to the U.S. We have the highest in the world. And a lot of those other basic issues. Not letting people just undocumented flood in with cholera and uh, stuff like leprosy that's been gone for over 100 years in this country at record levels. Admit the, the, the CDC admits health departments are collapsing everywhere. We have to secure the borders. We have to secure our currency. We have to cut taxes and free spending so we can start paying down the debt and get us back online to being the world's greatest creditor nation. And if Trump's going to do that, he can't work with Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi and all these other people who are going to stab him in the back in a minute. If he thinks Paul Ryan and Boehner and all these guys, and Boehner wasn't even one of the worst, actually, stabbed him in the back over and over again, he is crazy. And obviously, Donald Trump's really smart. And Donald Trump is fearless, and he's done it his way. He's discredited the media. He has discredited the pollsters. He's discredited the whole lying system because we, the people, were backing him. And everybody knows that they use the fact that info warriors were probably half of Trump's base support.
and brought in a lot of blue collar folks and educated folks and liberal folks and Reagan Democrats that understand we're true liberals that want to restore the republic. That's what a paleo conservative is. These terms mean nothing. And so we brought in the grassroots. We brought in the Reagan Democrats. We added that seal of Americana, that seal of true populism. And that's been recognized. And they tried to hang that wreath around Donald Trump's neck and said, Donald Trump's Alex Jones's buddy. Donald Trump quotes Alex Jones a lot. Donald Trump repeats a lot of the things Alex Jones says. And then the media wrote articles saying, Alex Jones is insane. He thinks Donald Trump really likes him. He thinks because Donald Trump has told him he's instrumental uh, in the awakening of America uh, that it's true. So again, it's that paradoxical system where they say one thing out of their mouth one day and another thing out of their mouth another day. The truth is, I know this movement is about InfoWars because it's about you. And I go out on the streets of America when in many cases, every other person I walk by is a listener and a viewer. And I know they're black, they're white, they're Hispanic, they're old, they're young, they're from foreign countries. And I know the demographics and I know the numbers we have of 60 plus million, 70 million, we're not even sure people that have tuned in in the last week just to our platforms. This is world changing and the system knows that. That's why they're trying to foment and fund all this garbage race war is because that's all an elite can do is try to divide and conquer us. Get the f*** out of here, dude. I'm you not gonna, dude, this is a public here. street. A piece of racist. How is he racist? How? Yeah. F***ing Trump. We were told that there was no way that he could ever win the nomination. And then they stole the nomination from Sanders, but Trump fought for it, so they had to back off. And then there was clear evidence of election fraud all over the country. Bev Harris, one of the top election fraud experts in the world, a Democrat nonpartisan, concurred with my analysis that there was major discrepancies in at least five states, all against Trump. The flipping of votes all across the country against Trump. The massive evidence of fraud. But still, there was such a tsunami wave, as Bev Harris and other experts have said, and as Trump has said, you can't cheat a landslide. The American people came out, record numbers of black Americans, Hispanic Americans voted for Trump, but the media tries to make it racial uh, and call it a white lash to make anybody who stands up for sovereignty and lower taxes a racist. But the good news is prosperity isn't racist. And folks across the world, not just here in the United States, see through that. Economists understand that the American engine of liberty was so productive, it was outproducing the entire world by the early 1950s. And even before that, hundreds of years before, British politicians wrote in the Times of London, you can pull this up, it's in history books, and said the American system's too free, it's too open, we need to shut it down. And this was before we even had the Revolutionary War. They were calling the colonies the American system because they weren't following all the regulations and all the rules that they had in Europe or they had in England that only allowed certain companies to produce certain things because they had a license from the government. The government was picking the winners and losers. And Donald Trump, more than anything, is trying to just bring back basic America. He's not even that hardcore, folks. And that's why they're so scared because they're up there running and selling the whole system. And if he leaves any of those people in there and their whole networks, it'll be impossible for him to get anything done. And they're going to just sit there and wait to assassinate him. They're going to sit there and wait till he's got his back turned. And they've tricked him enough to put some of their operatives into the White House. And they're going to move ahead full steam with their program. Finally, I want to address this. Today I was on the radio and I said, look, he must go after Hillary Clinton. She's committed all these crimes. It's in all the emails. The intelligence community leaked all this information because the globalists are planning to actually dismantle this country and end prosperity. It, it, it's total criminality. It must be exposed. It must be ferreted out. We have to see Hillary Clinton indicted. We have to see Bill Clinton indicted for Haiti. We have to see Chelsea Clinton get in trouble because they're not above the law. They're not new royalty. And it's been a long, long time since the Nixon era in 1974 that we've seen any justice for these high-level, quote, officials who act like they're imperial gods and think they're invincible because we've been treating them like they're Kim Jong-un of North Korea. If Hillary wasn't such a demon and if these globalists weren't so out of control and we were just kicking some, you know, syndicate out, then I'd say let them go to abstentia, let them leave. 
They're never going to do that. They're going to keep reorganizing and coming in. They were planning to shut down the free press this year. They were saying Alex Jones and Drudge Report don't have a right to exist. We're going to come after it. They've already handed the Internet over to the U.N. There is so much to reverse that we have to take this momentum and remove the corporate operatives that admit they've infiltrated and basically taken over our country. So I will reiterate, to make America great again, we must take the country back. Trump has taken the White House, phase one. It's quite frankly, 70% of the battle. If he moves decisively now, he has 70% of it. But every hour ticking, they put their people in, over the next two months, it's time for them to scheme and derail this and kill momentum and come up with new scams. While they're off balance, he has to come out and say, I'll work with Republicans, but I want the leadership gone. And I'll work with the Democrats, but uh, Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid, you've got to go. We need new people that want to make this country great again from your ranks, but not people that stabbed me in the back, not people that have lied, not people that have said I'm, fit to, I'm unfit to be president and half the country are deplorables. We need to see a sign that you witness the referendum that's happened in any other country, in the UK and other areas throughout history. If they had a route like this in a general election, you would see resignations across the government. People would be stepping down from parliament itself in the UK. Instead, they all think they own the country. They all think they get to stay there. They all think they're God. Welcome back. Owen Schroyer and Margaret Howell join me now, and we're going to give a little weekly wrap-up of just what's gone down after President-elect Donald Trump was officially given the title of the 45th President of the United States. People have absolutely gone mad across <laughs> the country. We're seeing protesters who are rightfully afraid, you know, are they or their friends, family going to get deported? But then we also have other protesters who once again are being shipped in, bussed in by moveon.org and all these other organizations that are trying to create civil unrest in this country. Mm -hmm. um, and really interestingly, we've got some B-roll uh, going right now where you can actually see that not only are they fighting against the system, they've, they've turned on each other. And this <laughs> seems to be something we see a lot that happens in the left. They begin to turn on their own when they lose. Um, perfect example, they're now blaming Facebook, or they're saying Facebook is partly to blame for the rise of Donald Trump, blaming Facebook, who we have exposed as doing everything they possibly could to help Hillary Clinton get elected. They even mess with their algorithm uh, to rig their news feed, to rig the coverage. <laughs> well, now they're blaming Facebook, saying that they didn't do enough to um, stop the quote-unquote fake news stories about the political topics. These stories help tip the scale in Donald Trump's favor. I mean, we did report after mm -hmm. report telling people, stop sharing these fake stories. It makes you look like a fool. It makes you look like an idiot. Um, but they're now making the case once again for Obama's uh, truthiness filter. <laughs> Wait, did you say that people who break the law are afraid of being punished? Wow, what a revolutionary thought. <laughs> but I kind of think there actually is a little truth to that where... It's not Facebook, but it's the people on Facebook, it's the Trump supporters on Facebook that dominated the narrative. Because guess what? We provided facts, we provided information, and we won the day. And they're pissed that they didn't curtail that more than they did, even though Twitter went out of their way to like shadow ban people, block people, take people off Twitter all So did Facebook, yeah. Well, the Clinton campaign, they're blaming the media as biased against Clinton. If you can <laughs> believe this, it's like, okay, so first of all... <laughs> That doesn't exist, people. There, there was an article that came out, it was on the Daily Caller, where they're, they're basically with their head in their hands. There's a picture circulating of Huma Abedin literally crying on the streets of New York. It's, it should go global. She's <laughs> beside herself. All of them are. Uh, Jennifer uh, Palmieri, who was a spokesperson for the campaign, she didn't mince words. She said 36 hours after the most devastating loss in history of American politics were the most... <laughs> And crazy victory we've ever seen, ever. Right. Devastating, Devastating loss. loss. That was <laughs> Hillary <laughs> Clinton. We're, we're looking at our whiteboard right now with lots of ideas. So they're all in a little room with their whiteboard trying to come up with how this happened. I'm and assuming. they come up with the, all these ideas and then they use their tears to wipe the board. <laughs> it's, a me, it's a media conspiracy. Don't forget and Miley Cyrus. She was crying too, although I think that was totally fake. I mean, isn't that incredible, though, that they had every single thing at their disposal? All the media, all the new tech giants. All the celebrities. All the celebrities. Everything and they still lost. They still could not win. Because you know what they didn't have? A good candidate? They well, the okay. Truth. But that's it right there. <laughs>
They didn't have, they didn't the, have truth. the truth. They didn't have they didn't have the actual knowledge. There was no foundation here. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and and that's why the Trump movement has been so far, powerful because beyond what you say or think about Trump or what he's done in the past, when you look at the policies and when you look at the things he said, it's based in truth. It's mm -hmm. based on putting America first and that's what people want. And that's why the trends, if you look at the trends, I mean, don't look at the New York Times trends. They <laughs> flip flop at one night all of a sudden. <laughs> but if you look at the trends, you know, Donald Trump support slowly and slowly went up. You witnessed right. it here just within our own organization at the beginning of the election cycle. A lot, a lot of people didn't like Trump and then slowly but surely more people started to come on board. So I think that that can be illustrated there. But I also think <laughs> that the reason why we're seeing this freak out from the Trump protesters or the Hillary Clinton camp is because it's a psychological thing where they've now been backed into a corner. They know that their time is almost finished. They know that we've backed them into the corner and the next move is to put them down, put the rabbit animal down. And so they're freaking out. They're trying to do anything they can to try to survive, basically, their liberal stronghold That's on the narrative. But yeah. They don't want to lose as far as they, as they have pushed the country in the wrong direction. And I think that's really just to underscore what you're talking about with uh, them not having the truth. It's so interesting because that blew up in their face. I mean, they were putting aggressive uh, agitprop protesters at Trump rallies mm -hmm. and then getting the press to blame it on Trump, mm -hmm. um, his supporters, totally lying, making up that scandal. Now we're seeing these protesters making up stories saying, mm -hmm. oh, I've been attacked by Trump supporters. Uh, here we have this this uh, Muslim woman in, in Louisiana who says she was physically attacked and robbed of her wallet and they ripped her hijab off. And now she admits she totally made the story up. So they're just making up stories now. They have, they have nothing else. John Podesta himself, uh, you know, number one humanitarian award winner of the year. He says the media always covered her as a person who would be president and therefore tried to eviscerate her before the election, but covered Trump, who and was someone universe. who was entertaining and sort of gave him a pass. Trump never got a pass They were on calling anything. him Hitler, and that's why we're seeing what's going on in the country. <laughs> what's, what Racist, crybabies? sexist, misogynist, homophobic, xenophobic. <laughs> Literally, Raper, you Huffington Post it. has that at the bottom of every single article. That right. Hurt. So, but it's Hillary Clinton bubbling. is obviously a known liar. So what do we see from her constituents? Making up stories, lies. total right. lies, the media. Donald Trump supporters are violent. Don't go to a Trump <laughs> rally. You might get beat up. Oh, okay. Walk around the streets in a Trump hat. You might get jumped. I mean, it's the exact your car opposite. car will be stolen while your hand's in the window. <laughs> and you've had the crap kicked out of you. We covered this yesterday. I know you covered it. Meanwhile, we have these ridiculous celebrities. I love the fact that Lena Dunham doesn't have the appeal and influence that she thinks that she has. So now mm -hmm. she has to backpedal. We see this. They said they were all going to leave. We counted on them leaving. We, you covered huh. this ad nauseum. You had a, you had had this, the champagne out, breaking it, going, we cannot wait for these deadbeats to leave. Turns out, they're not going they're anywhere. Kidding. Of course they're not going to leave. It's a joke. A <laughs> terrible joke. Lena Dunham, literally, I didn't mean I would actually, like, leave, leave. You know, just, like, it's just an thank expression. you. But you just hit the nail on the head, is... <laughs> they don't have the pull they thought they had. They really, these arrogant it's so punks really thought they could control us. They really thought that they that anything they said was going to be taken as such veritas with so much gravity that they could just say whatever mm -hmm. and then get away with it. And I'm sure that whoever, the, you know, these people were probably told by whoever handles them, you know, don't worry, we've got it rigged for Hillary so you can say this and you won't yeah. look like a jackass. Don't, don't be afraid to get like political. Jack, mm -hmm. Jack holes right there. <laughs> you do. Well, how incredible is that, though? I mean, I, I do believe we have reached critical mass now where we have so many people going against what their gods, the celebrities, have instructed them to do, that they don't have that tough. star power anymore, which They're, in the past, that was so powerful, so effective. They're shamelessly crying on Twitter. It is a sight to see right here. They are <laughs> shamelessly crying on Twitter. With Miley Cyrus, with, with her jewels on, she had this massive jewel. She's thanking Obama for his service. I'm like, wait a second. You're thanking Obama for literally fleecing our country dry <laughs> to the point where we're all basically starving. What is wrong to the point. You? To the point where Miley Cyrus has to be the one telling us how to, you, you know, Obama. figure our political views. Somebody who of morality yeah, twerks on stage, grinds up on a large penis sculpture. I'm sorry, this is just what they do. But hey, this is a beautiful thing. We've got them trapped in a corner. And right now, the Garden of Liberty is being watered with the liberal tears. So thank you. Right. We've got the Garden of Liberty. The plants are starting to grow. <laughs> and all of these liberal tears are just helping us grow even faster. That's right. Well, Trump has a huge task in front of him. 4,000 appointments open up for grabs. 
And the concern is that uh, we don't want to see neocons and shadow government elites put in these positions. Ron Paul, Dr. Paul echoed this. He said some of these people, they have more influence than the government itself. Mm -hmm. We don't want to see them, you know, continue on in a power structure where they really, we don't see the change that he promised. That's a major concern. We know that Trump, uh, you know, he's a straight shooter. He doesn't mince words at all. But the, at the same time, you've got 4,000 slots to fill. It's hard not to get a few bad eggs mm -hmm. in those slots. That's the concern. Going right. Ahead. And that's why, you know, going forward, we have to make sure that we check Donald Trump as well and anything going on with in his administration. I feel like right now, before he gets in office, we have a very powerful um, position to be able we know he's listening to the population we know that he wants to do the right we know that he has pride and he you know he he does want to be a successful president he's not going to want to be considered one of the worst presidents ever right. so we do have this opportunity to speak directly to donald trump and his administration and say look mm -hmm. you you ran on we the people and so here's what we want and i think that we can dialogue in a way that's you know, kind of middle ground where we're not isolating and dividing people, which is what we've seen for the last. But that's years. the irony is he really is the most middle ground candidate. Exactly. You know, all of these liberals that want to sit here and say warmonger, warmonger, warmonger. He voted against the Iraqi war, folks. Hillary voted for it. I mean, it's, you guys right. know what's going on. These are the yeah, brainwashed Yeah, well, masses. and that's why the never Trumpers were like, I don't want him in because he's not conservative enough. Well, newsflash, nobody wants your super far conservative country. I mean, we just don't. Yes, we have conservative values, but a lot of the country has kind of come this way. I think we're moving to a beautiful forward direction. Thank you so much, guys. And thank you all for tuning into the show tonight. It's been a crazy, wild week. We all deserve to celebrate a little bit. We'll see you here Monday, 7 p.m. Central.